Hey uh, and welcome to a how-to for crossing a river. Now I will use some footage here from the simulation game SnowRunner since the principles are the same. But I've also acquired some experience in river crossing in real life when I traveled across the rugged highlands of Iceland, as you can see here. I just didn't film all those crossings back then, so I fill in with SnowRunner. But all real footage you are seeing is me driving in Iceland. Now, first of all, be aware that there is a difference between fording a river and crossing a puddle. A big puddle, even if it is deep, the water doesn't move. If it's in the middle of the road, the ground will most likely be compacted and as long as you don't submerge your air intake, there is not much difficulties crossing puddles. Slow and steady going right through. Now, when you reach moving water, there should go much more thought into the fording. Always stop your vehicle and plan which line you want to take. If you feel just slightly unsure about the line, get out of the car and scout on foot. If still unsure, get your feet wet and walk your intended line on foot. Anything you cannot walk on foot, you should not attempt in a vehicle. What you want is shallow water with a grippy bottom ideally moving slightly downriver. With the downriver movement, the river force will actually help you to get across, which is especially important if the river is deeper than your ground clearance, since then the water will bulk up against the side of your car. For shallow grippy places, you can observe this flow and think about hydraulic principles. If a fluid has less space for the same volume, it has to speed up. The river has to transport the same volume everywhere. So when the total width of the river stays the same, but the water gets faster, that means the river is shallower at that point. Fast water is also good for a grippy surface, as it often leads to many small rocks in the riverbed, as just little mud and dirt can accumulate there with the fast flow. But be careful. If the width doesn't stay the same, but the river gets more narrow, the water will also be faster, but it will be still as deep, if not even deeper. So for a good path, I would advise to look for a very wide river spot with fast moving water all across and then plotting a path that crosses slightly down river across this, this area. Now, when you are sure about your path, you still have to execute it in driving. What's important there is to keep moving, very slowly, but not stopping in the river. If your car has low range or any differential lockings, engage them all for the fording. Avoid the largest rocks and just follow your path slowly and steadily. The main danger, apart from flipping the car in very bumpy riverbeds, is cutting your engine. For many vehicles, you will submerge your exhaust pipe during the crossing. This is not a problem when the engine runs and pushes out exhaust constantly. But if you cut it, the exhaust will flood with water immediately. The worst case is that you cannot start it again and it might even permanently damage the engine. Same goes for your air intake, which has to stay above the water line at all times. Stranding in a river would be game over until help can arrive and pull you out. So don't underestimate this. It will feel quite scary the first times as your wheels move around a lot and move away a lot of rocks and your car gets floatier the deeper it is. But if you plot your path right and drive carefully with the aforementioned guidelines, you should be fine. If you still have doubts before affording, rather not attempt it than to wreck your vehicle. So I hope this was helpful, whether you are a snowrunner player or an adventurer preparing for your first rugged road trip. Wish you a wonderful day. Skull.